Hi students, this is Ms. Wildy. This is our video lecture over taking notes from the textbook readings. Um, again, there are multiple ways to take notes. This is just one strategy that I think might help you. Um, I'd like you to try it, see how you how you like it, what you like, what you don't, figure out what works for you. Um, but I do think that this is a skill that you have to learn and, and develop. Um, and the more that you can do it, the better you'll get, and also the easier it will get. I know that some of you think of note-taking as being just this, this horrendous chore that you have to do. Um, unfortunately, it's necessary. Uh, because it will help you. It'll help you do well on tests. It will help you do well in in um, in college. Um, and these are the skills that we need to develop in high school. So that's why I really want to take the time to do it. Um, we're going to focus also on something that is um, useful to you, meaning I'm going to use your textbook. I'm not going to use some um, somebody else's textbook or I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you a video lecture from some other teacher doing it. I think it's, it's useful or more useful for you if I can show it in reference to what you're going to be doing. So the things that you need to have in front of you at this point, you need to have of course your human geography textbook um, and you need to, we're going to focus on pages 5 through 11. Um, so you need to have your um, note either you may have a piece of paper and you can make your own columns. I'm showing you the three column journal notes, that strategy. Um, you can also download this sheet from my e-class. I have this, a blank copy of it. You can download as many copies as you need, print them out, use them as often as you want. Um, or if you would rather just make your own columns on a piece of loosely paper, absolutely fine. Again, this is the three column journal notes. They're similar to Cornell notes, but not exactly. Um, they do have columns. <laughs> Um, and they also have a summary section at the bottom, which you do with Cornell. But what this does is try and help you do some pre-reading, um, which then helps you retain information and get the big picture. I find that sometimes what you guys do is read, but you're not really reading and you're not really seeing the big pictures or the big questions that need to be answered. So this helps you helps guide you doing that. So you do need a pen or pencil. Um, and you need the, this this notes either on a loose leaf or this this kind of copy that you've printed out from my e-class and of course the textbook. So like I said, we're going to focus on pages 5 through 11. I would always get in the habit of putting sort of the reading topic, perhaps it's chapter 1, um, introduction, and then the pages, pages 5 through 11. And what this does is if I say, hey, take out your notes from, um, you know, pages 5 through 11, you can easily find them. You can do a pop quiz easily. You can uh, focus your attention in the right place, all of those things, add things as we discussed, so forth. So um, you'll notice that the columns are this. The, the headings for the columns are this. Write headings as questions, and that's the headings from the textbook, like what is human geography? Hey, already done in a question for you. Easy. Um, and key terms, which in your textbook are bolded, so even better. Um, the second column is to summarize captions of pictures, maps, tables, charts, and graphs. I'll show you that in a second. And lastly, this is where you are sort of answering these questions and defining these terms. Okay, that's the, that's the real, real work that's being done as you're reading. And then lastly, you have a summarize or answer the first heading in three to four sentences. Um, and the, the first heading, what they're referring to, is really your main topic of that section, which in this case is, what is human geography? Um, okay, so let's kind of get started. Um, again, I'm going to kind of do, I've kind of done this a little bit, but I'm going to kind of show you what I did. So the first thing we're doing is not reading. I mean, we're, we're sort of reading, but we're not reading the, the information. What we're doing is doing some pre-reading. So we're looking at what we're about to read, and we're going to figure out the questions and the key terms. And we're going to write those in that first co column. So as I said, sometimes, um, sometimes textbooks don't give these to you in questions. Your textbook is even easier for you. So it says the question, what is human geography? So you're going to actually, on your notes, write, what is human geography? OK? That would be the first key question, or heading. Um, and then the next thing you come across is a bold term, human geography. Well, guess what? You've already written what is human geography. Why don't you just underline it as being a term, okay, and save, save yourself a little bit of time writing. The next term we come to is globalization. So 
right? Globalization. I like to underline because I know it's, I want to make sure I, I make sure all my vocab terms are easy to tell. You might want to highlight it. It's up to you. Maybe you want vocab terms in one color and the headings that are questions in another color. Totally up to you. I'm a fan of colors, but, but uh, whatever works for you is what I want. So back to the uh, reading, once we're done with globalization, no more over here, no more over here. We have another question. What are geographic questions? Hey, it's a question. What are geographic questions? Done. That's what you're going to keep doing as you go through pages 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? All we're doing is answering the questions. Um, you'll notice over here on page 10 there is a bold term, or not bold term, but a, a heading cultural landscape. What I would do is, and this is not a question, this is where you would say, what is the cultural landscape? That's how you would word it into a question, okay? And again, you've got lots and lots of vocab in this chapter. Um, I know it's going to seem overwhelming all at once. Um, that's why we kind of break it up as doing the vocab within your notes um, piece by piece. There are about, oh goodness, I think there's about 65 vocab terms in chapter one. There's a lot. There's not as many in any other chapter. But remember that we're trying to get that basis for our for all the other chapters, and that's why there's so much vocab. Just take it easy. Take it slow. It'll come. It'll get easier. Okay, so we're going to go back. Once we've done our first column, Then we're going to summarize our captions of pictures, maps, tables, graphs, and charts. Okay? There are no pictures on page 5. On page 6, there is a figure, figure 1.5, deaths from cholera in the Soho District of London, England, 1854. So I would want you to look at the map, look at what's being shown on the map, and also read the caption. Okay? Once you've done that, you're going to summarize what it says. Now, what I just did my own, you're welcome to change what I, in fact, I would appreciate you doing your own. But what I wrote was figure 1.5, map of cholera in London, 1854. I like dates in the sense of giving you perspective of, of why it's, why, when it happened. Um, showed disease near H2O pumps, water pumps, equals disease spread in water or waterborne disease. So um, that's how I summed up that, that map. You're welcome to do it in another way if you would like. This is just my, my interpretation of the figure. Um, there's another figure or picture on page 7 map, um, cholera in Haiti in 2010. I summed that up as figure 1.6, 2010, cholera in Haiti, highest near river and refugees camp. Again, these two things are showing you that cholera is a waterborne disease. Whenever you're talking about um, places uh, or times, like 1854, where we didn't know that cholera was a waterborne disease, or in more modern day times, like Haiti, but it's a poor country, you're going to have more disease as a result. So you're going to keep going through the reading, find any page that has maps or charts, or photographs, field note, um, and you're going to sum up what is being discussed in or shown in those. And the captions are your best friend with this. They will help you, guide you in terms of how you want to summarize. But please don't write the caption word for word. That's not going to be helpful. Um, I want you to try and read it and interpret it yourself. Okay, so once we've done our pre-reading, which is going to be those first two columns of our notes, this one and this one, then we really need to start reading, and that's how we're going to answer our questions and define our terms. So you're going to go back to the first part, and you're going to read. Now, this is where we can get a little monotonous. I would say that you need to read slowly. You may need to reread a couple times, especially with vocab terms. Um, and also, if you feel like you're zoning out or you're losing track of what you're reading, take a break. Go walk around the house. Go get a drink of water. Go um, get a snack. Something to kind of give you a break and then come back and refocus on where you were and make sure that you're getting this in your head. Um, so, again, I did for my third column. Um, in terms of answering the question, what is human geography, I defined human geography, and that's why I have an HG. Focuses on how people make places, how we organize space and society, how we interact with each other, and make sense of others and ourselves. That is a very close to the textbook definition. It's a little different just to kind of save myself some, some uh, space. Again, I would rather you put the vocab terms in your own words. Um, 
but if you're having trouble explaining what the, de what the definition is, then put it in your own words. Um, I think that this textbook is a good textbook, but one of the things that I think it lacks in is an easy way for 14 and 15 year olds to understand the key terms. So that's what I expect you to be coming in with. Come in and go, that definition of globalization made no sense to me. Please explain it in your own words or make it sense to me. That's what we need to be doing. So if you can't put it in your own words, then please copy the textbook version and leave room to further explain it in class when you come in the next day, okay? So again, I kind of have answered the what is human geography by putting the definition here. So the next thing over there is globalization. Uh, look, definition, globalization, interconnection, interconnections, and interdependence around the world. Where's my focus? Come on. All right, there we go. Um, my next thing over here says, what are geographic questions? I have put the why of where and what does it mean? And again, this is not going to make sense to you until you've read it, but this is what I interpreted that those answers to be. And then the rest of it's going to be your, your mostly vocabulary. Um, like I said, there's a lot of vocab in this section. Um, I think you're probably going to need more than one page to do all of the questions and answers from this reading. So please don't assume that just because I gave you one-sided notes of three-column journal notes that that's all it's going to take to do pages 5 through 11. I think you're going to need at least two, maybe even three, depending on your handwriting and depending on how much help you need with this, these terms. Um, And the last thing we have to do is summarize what we read. So at the end, after you've gone and read five, six, seven, all those pages, then you're going to summarize. Um, and this is where you kind of are putting the big picture. Now you're going to have some specific details in there, but you also need to make sure you're getting the big picture of what's being talked about. So for my summary, I wrote this. Obviously, I would prefer you to have something different from what I have, um, but I'm just going to show you kind of what... Um, what I put down. And again, remember that our, we're summarizing our main first heading, which was, what is human geography? So I wrote, the study of human geography answers the why of where. It helps explain where and why disease spreads, gives us a look at how things and people are distributed across an area. And there are five themes that are explained in human geography, location, place, movement, HEI, which is human environment interaction, and region. That's how I summed it up. You are welcome. In fact, I would encourage you to do something a little different for your summary. But that's what you need to do for every time you're reading in a textbook. You need to kind of make sure that you're doing some pre-reading, making sure you're understanding what the big questions are going to be, the vocab terms are going to be. Look at the pictures, look at the maps, look at the um, graphs, and then finally um, answer those questions and summarize. So hopefully that was helpful, um, and I will um, uh, answer any questions that you have tomorrow in class. Thanks.